In these next few examples of function analysis, we're going to look at a graph of the derivative and recognize some things about both the derivative and the second derivative to help inform our graph of the original function. In this first example, in terms of the derivative, we see that our derivative is positive, has positive values, until it reaches negative 1, where its value is 0, and then after negative 1 is negative. So we would expect our function to be increasing until negative 1, go horizontal, and then decrease after negative 1. Now the second derivative, which I will do in red, has to do with the slope of the tangent lines to the first derivative. So notice that bef prior to prior to negative 1, the tangent lines are negative and getting steeper. Until at negative 1, it appears to possibly be completely vertical. So with regards to the second derivative, the slopes of those tangent lines are negative and getting more and more negative until negative 1 where it's so steep that it might be vertical right? so it's positive infinity potentially and then after negative 1 the slopes start to flatten out again so they're still negative they're st the tangent lines are still negative but they appear to be approaching zero, perhaps at some point in the future. Which means that we expect our graph to be concave down both before negative one and after negative one. And perhaps it's about to change, but we just can't see that given the information. So, if we were to sketch a possible graph of the original function, with our only really key value being at negative 1. We expect our graph to be increasing, but concave down into negative 1. So it might be doing something like this. And then where it should flatten out, have a horizontal tangent. And then after negative 1, our graph needs to remain concave down and be decreasing. Perhaps it's doing something like, like that. And maybe it's looking like it may even be about to change concavity. It's hard to tell. Let's consider another graph. This particular derivative has a vertical asymptote at 2. And we can see that our derivative has a value of 0 at what appears to be 1.5 and 2.5. So at 1.5 and 2.5 our derivative has a value of 0. Before 1.5 our derivative is positive. After 1.5 our derivative goes negative and it stays negative to 2.5 and then it becomes positive again. Another thing to notice is since these values are running up against a vertical asymptote, at 2, we could say something like our the value of our derivative is infinite. It's, it's never actually going to reach an x value of 2. If they're getting closer and closer to it, and they would only get there if they get to the bottom of the y-axis, so to speak thinking about our second derivative as being the slopes of the tangent lines to the derivative, we can see that those slopes are negative and getting steeper and steeper and steeper until 2. So for our second derivative, our slopes are negative, and at 2 they're very steep, we could say that they're vertical, and after 2 our tangent lines have positive slopes. So we would expect our graph to be increasing until 1.5, decreasing until 2.5, and then increasing after 2.5. And we would expect a change in concavity. It should be concave down before 2 and concave up after 2.
So, with those facts in mind, here is a possible graph. And again, I want to stress the possible graph for our function, with key values being at 2 and at 1.5 and at 2.5. So this is 1.5 and there's 2.5. So our function should be increasing until 1.5 and then be decreasing after that and it should be concave down all the way from in that whole section. Our function should be decreasing until 2.5 and then be increasing after that it should be concave up. So this with the vertical asymptote at 2 is a possible graph. And again this is just possible. You might have come up with something else. Um, as long as it fits the parameters, then it's legitimate. Let's consider another graph. So here, for f prime of x, we can see that the derivative is positive until it reaches 0, when it does have a value of 0. And then after 0, our derivative is positive again. So this original function should be increasing the entire way. When we consider the second derivative, the slopes of the tangent lines, they begin negative and are getting steeper and steeper and steeper until they reach 0. So my second derivative begins negative, and at 0, it's, pro it's vertical for all intents and purposes. After 0, it's positive. So we're expecting a change in concavity at 0 from concave down to concave up with a function that's always increasing. So a possible sketch of the original function would be a function that's increasing into 0, changing concavity, and then continuing to increase. Let's look at the final graph for this example. Here we have a graph that's not continuous. The derivative is not continuous. But we can see that for the derivative, it is positive until you get to 0, where it is 0. And then it is negative until you get to 1. At 1, the derivative becomes positive again. So it never become, goes to 0. So the graph won't be horizontal at that point, and stays positive until about 4.5, when it's 0 again, and then it's negative after that. If we think about the second derivative, the second derivative is the slope of the tangent lines, which are negative into 1 and negative after 1. So for our second derivative, the slopes of the tangent lines to the first derivative are negative into 1 and stay negative after 1. So we expect a graph that's concave down everywhere. A possible graph then, for given this information, with important features at 1 and 4.5 and 0, Again, at 0, our graph should be increasing into 0, where it should have a horizontal tangent, and then be decreasing into 1, and be concave down on that entire interval. Then, our graph should be increasing until 4.5, where it should have a horizontal tangent, and then be decreasing 4.5 and be concave down on the entire interval so something like this and again these are just possible graphs you may have something that fits the parameters that's different from this